Hi, I'm Dea from Supermetrics. Today, I'm accompanied by one of our clients, Jack from Cutbet and Co. He will soon tell us how they ensured reporting with their clients when transitioning from UA to GA4. So, Jack, could you introduce yourself and Cutbet and Co? Yeah, hey, nice to be here. Um, I'm Jack, the director of paid media here at Cast Inco. Um, we are a paid search and paid social agency, um, and we focus specifically on DTC e-commerce brands. Um, so to give you an idea of who some of those are and who we've worked with, um, we work with End Clothing, uh, Bold, Spoke London, Oliver Bonas, uh, Sealskins, Typology, um, just to give you an idea of that. Um, and I suppose how we work and what we do is kind of based on four main pillars, really. Um, so our clients have direct access to our analysts. Um, which basically means that there's no, there's no middleman, there's no sort of lost in translation. If they ask for something and, um, it goes directly to the people that will be working on it and, and making those changes or, or the experts on the account. Um, we don't just follow best practice, we define it. Um, so I think what's really important these days, especially with the influx of machine learning, um, sort of automation is that best practice is. It's now kind of different for each and every account that you work on, um, depending on the different nuances and how that feeds into sort of controlling the machines. Um, we're creating tomorrow's talent. So we've got our fast track academy where we, it's like our graduate scheme, graduate program, um, but also for anyone looking for sort of career changes and stuff like that. Um, they, they come on board, they go through a fairly intensive, um, first few months of us, but then they're very quickly set up to sort of work on clients, um, and be very forward facing for us as an agency. Um, and then arguably most important is our sort of deep e-commerce expertise. Um, by that, I mean, we've sort of seen the sort of clients that we work with and our experience, but it's likely that if, uh, you have a problem in this field, we've probably seen it and probably solved it for someone, someone else. So we're very well placed to help out, um, on that front. And then of course we've our sort of partnerships with, um, the platform. So we're sort of meta partners with Google premier partners, we're Google international growth partners, um, and all of the sort of benefits that come about of, of having close ties to, um, the platforms that we're working on. Great. Thank you, Jack, and great to have you on the call. Um, so let's dive deep into the actual topic. So. How did you set up your GA4 reporting for clients after they transition from universal analytics to GA4? Yeah, so I, I guess, um, the background in, in our setup really is we've been using BigQuery to create all of our reporting and we've been using that for the past four or five years um, to do that. So the change from universal analytics to GA4 has been relatively straightforward for us. Um, all we really had to do was set up new transfers to GA4 to pull that data into BigQuery. Um, and then we just had to get comfortable with the new table formats, um, and the new sort of data, uh, the GA4 was providing, um, and adapt our queries to bring that into our report. Super. That sounds relatively easy and straightforward, but how has Supermetrics been part of, part of all of this? Yeah, so we've been using supermetrics for uh, probably since sort of day one say sort of seven eight years um originally for google sheets and then we moved on to uh supermetrics a big query when we we realized we need a needed a slightly different solution um so i've been using supermetrics big query for about the last four years uh we've had we've been syncing that data again sort of again universal analytics um since about 2019, um, and we started sort of syncing our GA4 data in the last year, depending on when it's, it's been adopted. Um, so yeah, we've been using Supermetrics for, for a reasonably long time and, um, they found it very, very useful, um, especially with this transition. Super. Um, how about the actual platforms, Google analytics, how do you use that at the moment? So GA is main use case for us is with reporting. Um, so a lot of our clients use GA as their source of truth. Um, by that, I mean, that's kind of to get their conversion revenue figures. 
sort of deduplicated across all of the different platforms that they're working on. Uh, so we tend to incorporate that data into our reports um, alongside alongside some metrics from the platform so that we get more of a whole amalgamated view of performance um, and are able to make better decisions um, and have a better understanding of what's really going on. Um, and yeah, like I said, Jay is often that source of truth. So being able to create cross-channel reports um, to look into things like marketing efficiency ratios, which is, allows us to get a much better understanding of what kind of all of the marketing spend is doing um, and where incremental conversions are coming from. Super. And in this scenario, how do you use Supermetrics? Um, so the way we use Supermetrics, so Supermetrics basically allows us to plug into all the different APIs. We then take the data from the APIs, put it into BigQuery. That's what Supermetrics does for us. Um, once all of the data is in BigQuery, that's our data warehouse, we write the SQL code basically to pull all the different bits of information that we need. Um, and then we output that into a uh, Google Sheet. Um, which is where we do our front end reports, um, which I hope I can show you an example of. Let me pull that up. Yeah, super interesting to see the see the reporting example because I think many of our clients can relate on the fact that they do need a one source of truth for their marketing data. Yeah, so uh, this is this is what it looks like. So just looking at the sort of back end. I guess to start with, we use the um, native data connector for BigQuery uh, with Google Sheets. Um, that's basically where you, where you write the code and that then talks to BigQuery and pulls the data out. We then extract that data into effectively a data tab um, with various different breakdowns, um, which allows us to then basically pull all that information and exactly what we need into sort of front facing reports and reports that are really useful for our analysts to be able to dive in and um, look for different um, different parts of the account, really. Um, so all of these drop-down menus, which I'll show you on this daily tab, um, for example, it's already on the filter. So when we're looking at sort of UK, we, if we just look at brand, for example, we can do that and we'll take that filter off. All of this information updates. Uh, okay. All that information updates and you and kind of everything is now just looking at the UK market as a whole. We can obviously break that down by different platforms, different campaign types, uh, and various different things. Um, we had a few visualizations to go with it, um, and then various different information that you get down, uh, sort of down to daily data um, and trends for sort of all the key metrics. Great, looks insightful. Um, have you noticed? Any differences between Universal Analytics and GA4 metrics? Yeah, so I uh, so the probably the biggest thing in terms of the metrics is GA4 takes a, a few days for the kind of the the data to be finalised. Um, whether that's due to attribution, uh, I'm pretty sure they're, they're using data driven attribution rather than UA using um, last month direct click. Um, so that's probably the biggest learning is that. When we're pulling the data into our data warehouse actually we need to be pulling every day we need to be pulling like the last sort of three to seven days um sometimes more than that just to make sure that we're capturing uh all of the changes that are happening on the platform after you've done the original sync super and that was one of the main things that our internal experts noticed as well that it takes a lot longer for ga4 to process the data um, but let's dive a bit deeper into the actual migration. So when did you start to migrate your clients from Universal Analytics to GA4? Uh, yes, probably about a year ago now. Um, so I think around about this time last year, there's a big push from Google to basically get the ball rolling, get everyone set up. Um, with the idea being that come a, a few months from now, summer this year, that you'll be able to have year on year data for GA4 as you move through 2023 um whether you know not everyone has been able to do that but um so sort of there's we've seen a lot more clients in the last um few months really picking up the sort of baton to get ga4 done um as that deadline gets closer and closer yeah we've seen a similar trend with with many of our clients that the usage of ga4 connector 
has really seen an increase in the past few months. Um, what was the initial response from your clients when you said like, hey, now it's time to start the transition from Universal Analytics to GA4? Yeah, so I mean, most people knew they needed to, to make that move. Um, but I think when there's sort of a year to play with, um, it's, it's never that high up on the priority list, um, especially when you, you probably need some dev work to go into it as well. Um, so we had a few people that were able to get things moving quite quickly and get J4 in place, which was great. Um, but kind of the main concern was seen kind of across the board um, and largely it was a case of something new replacing something that you're very familiar with. So, I mean, yeah, UA has been around for probably most people's um, time in marketing um, and, and taking that away where you know where everything is, you know where your favorite data are, your favorite reports, your favorite all of, all of that, um, which you can do kind of with a few clicks of a button, having to learn something new and incorporate that into your um, day to day uh, can be a bit daunting. Yeah, and I I think even I can relate that you got so used to on clicking different things in Universal Analytics, and now GA four doesn't allow you to do that. So it has been a learning curve for my myself as well. Um. But have you been able to duplicate all your universal anal analytics reports in, in GA4? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah, we have really. I mean, the, the main thing we use analytics for, as I mentioned, was uh, pulling conversion and revenue data. Um, so being able to duplicate that, being able to like add on the GA4 metrics to our reporting um, has been fairly straightforward largely down to the use of supermetrics and BigQuery, the fact that we have a, we use a data warehouse. So once the data gets into that platform, so BigQuery, we, we know how to use it, right? It's, it's the same format as data tables and we were very comfortable doing that. So we didn't have to learn a new platform. We just had to sync GA4 with the platform that we, we know and we use um, every day. Um, so yeah, that, that was fairly straightforward like i said mainly used for um those conversion remedy data but then also for kind of we do kind of not a lot of product reporting through analytics um, and we've been able to side duplicate that j4 as well through the same methodology super and they're all super metrics in this transition once more yeah so um it's probably the best way to describe it is it kind of equalizes the, the playing field really so being able to take data from various different places and put it into one centralized place then you only have to learn how to work with that one centralized place uh, rather than learning how to work with four five six different uh different areas and obviously that's that's what supermetrics does whether that's into um a data warehouse or google sheets or um whatever that may be super and last but definitely not the least, uh, what has been your biggest learnings during during all of this? Um, yeah, so a couple of things really. So I think I mentioned around the data taking a um, few few days or a bit longer to sort of finalize in GA4. So that's something that you definitely need to be aware of, especially if you're pulling that data into a warehouse because you almost take a snapshot of it when you do that. Um, so you need to make sure that you're you're constantly syncing it so that what you've got in your data warehouse is updated as and when GA4 gets updated. Um, and then, so on that point around syncing data, and this is something that we sort of um, learned only recently, uh, was that with GA4, and I don't know if this is the case for other warehouses, but certainly for BigQuery, is you can only sync 14 days at a time. So when you set up your transfer, you can only backfill for the last 14 days so if you've had j4 running for the last year and you haven't been syncing that data um unfortunately it's a very manual process of doing that 14 day chunk and then going back in another 14 days and not 40 days um which yeah i, I, I can't do the maths now but it's uh it's a bit of a long process yep. yeah. great um thank you jack this was Super insightful, and it was great to hear how how you've ensured the reporting with GA4. Um, like I said, thank you for the interview, and I hope you have a great spring ahead. 
Thank you very much. Great to chat.